Hi, welcome for those of you that are joining us. We're going to wait just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna wait just a couple more minutes and see if we've got some others that are gonna jump on and then we'll get started. I know you all have just had a, a long school day, so if you don't wanna spend more time on your, on your computer screen. We still have a few more joining us, so I'm gonna wait just a couple more minutes. Hope that's all right. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and get started. You all have just had a school day. I know you don't wanna spend more time on your computer screen. I don't wanna take up more of your afternoon. Um, welcome, class of 2021. Um, congratulations, you're almost halfway through your senior year. It's hard to believe. I have a senior at my household and I cannot believe how quickly the year is going. Um, obviously, your senior year looks a bit different. Obviously, this right here, we typically come into the school to meet with you all, um, but lo and behold, COVID is still hanging on. And so we're all learning how to do things remotely and differently. My name is Deb Ebert. I am the scholarship and donor services coordinator at the Finley Hancock County Community Foundation. And at the foundation, um, we have a um, universal application is what we call it. Um, and within our Foundation, we administer close to 130 to 135 scholarships. And this past year in 2020, we gave out um, just a little over $370,000 in scholarships to area students. So it's a really great place to get some information for scholarships. We've got a lot out there. Our donors have created scholarships that are anywhere from going to a specific university, being from a specific high school, um, if you've been involved in athletics or music or drama, or you've gone to Millstream, um, you're coming back to school um, later in life, teachers who are going back for their master's degree. It's a wide range of, of scholarships that the donors have um, set up. For, for students just like yourself. So it's a great resource. Um, we love working with the students, with your high school counselors, 
um, your high school teachers. It's It's been really a great experience. So that's a little bit about us. Um, first of all, we are gonna record this and then your guidance counselors will have it so you don't have to take a lot of notes. Um, right now, if you don't want to, you'll have access to come back and watch it again. So just again, we are recording this so that you're aware of that. I am gonna share my screen and let's see, we're gonna see Jenna maybe. All right, so what I wanna show you first is um, our website. So our website is www.community-foundation.com. So when you go to our website, this is what you're gonna see. This is our main homepage, but you'll also then see all of these links across the top. Go to scholarships, you can click on that and that'll take you to our scholarship page. What you can do here is this particular link will show you all of the scholarships that we have. And they're broken down as to whether they're Finley High School, whether they're Hancock County, whether it's out of state, um, any of those areas that we have, that whole listing is there. It reminds, it lets you know when we open up, that we opened up last week. You can also search by scholarship name if you want to, or you can filter it in terms of a category, um, if it's golf, we have quite a few scholarships that are specifically golf or if it's swimming or, or any of those sorts of categories. Um, high school, again, they're all listed. So you could specifically hit Finley High School and it'll only show you scholarships for Finley High School. Now, we do have a lot of scholarships that are Hancock County students. So just because um, you're at Finley High School doesn't mean you might not qualify for others that are for Hancock County. You still qualify for Hancock County students. Um, there are about 40 scholarships that are specifically Finley High School. So you'll, you know, you those will be some you automatically qualify for, but there also might be some county ones. So don't be surprised about that. Um, then the next thing you could do is with the scholarships, you would go to application types. And that will bring you to our common application. Again, this link right here will show you information that you would need to have to apply in terms of if you're going to need parent information, their employment information, things that you'll need about um, your high school. Just it's a FYI for everything that you're going to need. Um, we do have a lot of scholarships that are renewal. So if you are receiving an award you get awarded in a scholarship this year that is a renewal, then that process, process will start again for you next May when you're finishing up your freshman year. Um, but that's something that if you get that scholarship in our renewal, we can touch, I'll touch base with you at that time. But all you would need to do is click this apply today and it's gonna take you directly to our universal application, okay? All right, I'm, I also have a Q&A box, so I'm going to try to keep up on those Q&As and I might um, touch base on them now or I might go back to them. But if you put a, a Q&A in there, um, I, will, I will let you know, I will get to that question. And I'll try to answer them just for everybody um, so that everybody can hear the question because you might have the same, somebody else might have the same question, just like in class. Um, so this will take you to your main login screen. Now. I'm going to eventually go to our my behind the scenes screen, which will be exactly like yours, um, because if I try to apply within this one that you apply in, it kind of throws off our system a bit. Um, but this is the screen you'll see. So what you will need to do is this gives you some information right here. And we've got video tutorials and a written tutorial. Uh, right here on this. So all you need to do if you're not sure or you forget, you know, you can always click on this link and that will pull up as well to help walk you through it. Um, so all you would need to do if you're brand new, you're going to hit create new account. And then that's going to take you to a registration page. So what I'm going to do is maybe Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
I'm trying to get back to my, I'm just gonna close this one. All right, so this is my pretend one. So I am going to um, create an application here, just as you would. So your logon page, um, I'm gonna say I'm a scholar, I'll just say scholar at, give myself a password. So then this would be your next screen that you see, create new account. And this, again, it walks you through everything. You've got little pieces of information as you go along. Um, if it is an asterisk, it's required. Otherwise, so I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say Susie Scholar. Now, I'm gonna give you a suggestion and we ran into, we've run into this the last couple of years. A lot of students um, have the only email account that they have is what they have through school. So my suggestion is at some point create a real grown up um, email account, whether it's Gmail, Hotmail, um, woh.rr.com, whatever, but create, um, an email account that is outside of the school. Because as I said, if you receive a scholarship and it's a renewal, I will be reaching back out to you next May after you're finishing your, your freshman year of college. So the email address that I would have would be your high school email address, which you may not have access to anymore. So my suggestion is at some point between now and the time you graduate from high school, make sure that you have a grown up email address. Um, one, two, So now you've put that information in and you're gonna hit next. This is when you're gonna come up with your own password. I will not create your password. I won't know your password. If you have a problem with your password, you're gonna to have to go back in and do the forgot password. Um, I don't have access to that. So uh, make sure that you write that down somewhere. Create account. I don't want to do that. So we'll say I have received the email. So you will get this email confirmation um, and you can continue on without it. But basically the email address that you put in, you should receive an email confirming that you have created an account with us. So then this is your apply page. This is giving us our specifics of the description about our scholarships here at, at the Community Foundation. It gives you the deadline, February 3rd at 12 noon. And then it also gives you the website again. So then you click apply and it's gonna take you to your application. Now, as we go through this, I am going to, I'm gonna answer as many questions as I can. I'm going to seem like a, a Debbie Do Good here in terms of everything I'm putting in, but so many of our scholarships have very specific criteria. And so I want you to see how, if I answer a certain way, it might lead to another question but that other question is because it's criteria for a scholarship. 
So I, and there's, especially with Finley High School, there's a lot of them. So I want to try and answer as many of them as I can so that you can see what that looks like. So first thing you're gonna see is again, if it's an asterisk, it's required. First question, are you a child or a grandchild of an employee or a board member here? So I'm gonna say no. Now, if I said yes, Oh, it didn't do it for me, sorry. If I say yes, it's gonna pop up in, uh, with a red warning box that says that you did that. So no, I'm gonna say I'm a female. I am a US citizen. You'll notice that these are all asterisked. I'm from Hancock County. birth date, I am a graduating high school senior. Now, obviously we have scholarships that are for others. So that's why there are other choices there. Um, but you being class of 2021, you are a graduating high school senior. Do you wish to be considered for need-based scholarships? That means um, some of our scholarships, that's a specific criteria. If you wanna be qualify for a scholarship based on your financial need, you would click yes. If you don't want to be um, considered for any of those scholarships, you'll click no. Some people choose not to do the FAFSA, so you would click no. Some people prefer to not share that information. You click no, that's fine. But recognize if you say no, you might eliminate yourself from some scholarship opportunities. So I'm going to say yes, I want to be considered for need-based scholarships. Then you're gonna put in parent information. Mommy dearest, fake mommy. Obviously none of this is relevant. Uh, let's see, works at Meyer. Just making stuff up. Um, and this spot, do you wanna do a second parent? Yes or no, doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna say no. Now recognize that if you are awarded a scholarship in August, we have a big flyer that we put in the career and we list your parents' names and we get that information from this application. So if you want your parents' um, names part of that, um, both of your parents, you would wanna add the second information. Now, this next section, education financing. This is all the FAFSA information. This came up because I clicked yes to this question. If you click no, you won't see this financial information section on your application. This is because I mark yes that I want to be considered for scholarships with financial need. So this is where I would do that. You will have information if you need help with the FAFSA. This is where you'll upload your SAR report. Um, this has been updated within the actual system. This again is our behind the scenes makeup, made up system. Um, so this is actually five megabytes. That way um, you can make sure that you have enough. So I would upload something, I'm gonna do this. That's not what that is, but that's okay. You'll enter your EFC score. Um, you will find that on your SAR, that will be there. You guys are gonna get really good at knowing what all of this means, I'm sure. Um, and then your school of your either chosen school or your first choice, you know, if you know exactly where you're going or whatever your first choice is. So we're gonna say University of Toledo, annual tuition, um, 12,000, 7,000 room and board. Uh, that's very low. Don't think that yeah, that's all you're gonna pay. Are you financing your own education without help from parents or other individuals? Yes, no, or partially, okay? So I'm gonna say no. This is then when, if you say no, this question pops up. Who's helping to finance your education? My parents. 
How much? Um, 100%. I have amazing parents. Other comments? If you have something that you want to share with the selection committee regarding your financial situation, you can do that. You don't have to. Um, that particular part is not required. There's not an asterisk. Again, this comes up depending on how you answer this question. So high school information, high school city, Finley, high school state, Ohio. We do have some scholarships that are for out of state students, um, very specific ones for certain schools out of state. So that's why we've got this question here, but if you hit Ohio, then you don't need to worry about it. High school county, again, we're in Hancock graduating in 2021. Now I'm not gonna answer this so that I can submit it and you can see what happens if I skip something. The school I'm attending is Finley City. School district in which I reside is Finley City. My GPA is a 3.7. Now this is where I'm gonna answer yes to everything so you can see how things continue to pop up. Did you participate in athletics? Yes. Extracurriculars at clubs, yes. College courses, yes. Now, the ACT, SAT, I know that some schools, some universities are making that optional. So this is where you can put your score there, but we've not made it a, a required answer because it's not required for some universities. So we will skip that part. Church activities, yes, I was involved, yes, I volunteered in the community service. Next thing is awards and honors. So if you've received awards, honors, whatever, um, say for example, here are some examples. Dean's list, you were on the, in college, the Dean's list, or you were in on the honor roll, grades nine through 12, all four years, you'd put that. If you received some sort of award, outstanding math student, outstanding art student, um, theater student, whatever, you could put that information there as, as well. This is required, so you need to have something in there and I'm just putting stuff, just so we can move on. So this ties into the extracurricular and club activities that I said yes to up here. Right here I said yes, so then it pops up down here for me. So now I have to, these are just some options. Now, again, some of them are very specific to scholarships. So that's why these specific ones are listed. Um, or you can say none of the above because there's other things that you did. But we'll say I was involved in National Honor Society. I was a camp counselor. I helped build for Habitat. I was also in Project Compass, which is a Finley High School program. Um, I volunteered at the Historical Museum and that, that's it. Then this is where you list that for us. This is, these are the things that the scholarship selection committees look at. What were your involvements? What did you do? Did you have any leadership roles? So if you were in the recycling club for nine through 11, three years, and you put in five hours a week with it, put that down there. If you were on um, student council from nine through 12, four years, you put that there. If you were class president for your senior year, you'd put that as a leadership role. Any of those extracurriculars or club activities you've been involved in, list as much of them as you can. And also if you had any leadership roles. So I'm sorry, that is required. So I will type some things. What sports did you play in high school? I am going to say I was just an amazing athlete which is a complete joke to begin with, but I'm gonna list a lot. So again, you see some very specific criteria for Finley High School scholarships. So I played bas baseball and basketball and I cheered and I played football and I was in golf, played hockey, um, soccer. I was on the swim team. I played track and volleyball. Now, because I'm of the way I'm answering this question and the original question of did I play sports in high school, all of this is gonna filter in. How many years did I play in high school? If you played any of the sports for all four years, you're gonna put a four. Or if you played just your senior year, you'd put a one. Did you play any varsity sports? Yes, I did, because this is criteria for some of the Finley High School scholarships. So here you're gonna list your sports details. 
you're going to say what sport you were in, what years you participated, what your involvement was, if you were a captain, if you earned awards for that. Again, these are the things that the selection committees are looking for in terms of your involvement in school, extracurriculars, community service. So this is where you're going to just put all of the information about all the things you did. Again, because I answered earlier that I played basketball, here's another question. If you didn't play basketball and you don't mark basketball, this question will not be on your application. Okay, but I did say that I played basketball because there are some scholarships criteria for that. And yes, I lettered my senior year. No, I didn't do anything in the off season though, in terms of helping with camps. How many varsity sports? I played um, four different varsity sports. How many years did I play varsity sports? Only three because I didn't play varsity my freshman year. Did I play varsity sport prior to my senior year? Yes. Now, what did I earn a varsity letter in? Oh, basketball and football and hockey and soccer and track and volleyball. You've played varsity sports. How many varsity letters did you earn? Three. Did you earn that in your junior or senior year? Yes. I know some of these seem really redundant and overboard, but again, part of it will depend on how you answered previous questions. For example, swim team is another one. I answered that I was that I swam in high school. If you didn't swim in high school and you don't mark that, you're not going to see this question. But I said that I did, so yes, I was a varsity swimming in my senior year. There is the Gregory James Schrader Swimming Scholarship for Finley High School. That's what this is tied to. So if you swam, you're gonna wanna answer yes. Golf, yep, I played golf. And yes, I qualified for the Finley Area Golf Association Championship. Again, if you didn't mark that you played golf, you will not see this question on your application. This is where volunteer and community service information, again, a lot of what our selection committee is looking for. What did you do? How many years did you do it? How involved were you? Did you have any leadership roles in those sorts of things? So you're gonna type whatever you can in there. Now we go to college information. This is a drop down. We have BGSU, Ohio State, University of Finley, Miami of Ohio and Ohio Northern, and then other. Those five are specifically listed because we have scholarships that are specifically related to those universities. If you are a Finley High School senior that's going to go to the University of Finley, there is a scholarship specifically for you. So you would want to mark University of Finley. That's why these are listed here and not every university. If you're going to University of Toledo, put other, okay? expected graduation year. We hope that you graduate in 2025. You will be an undergrad freshman in the upcoming school year. Okay. Um, and then the type of education, what kind of school are you going to? Is it going to be a trade or vocational? Because we have scholarships for that. Is it a two-year or a four-year? We have scholarships for that. Um, so we're going to say a four-year. Again, associate, bachelor's, the master's graduate and a certificate that's for some of the other scholarships. Obviously that's not gonna apply to you guys. We're gonna say you're gonna get a, mat, a bachelor's. Um, and I'm going to say that I'm going to be in, um, we're gonna go engineering. And additional, we're gonna say it's chemical engineering. Minor, why is it really slow? I don't know yet. I don't know what I want to minor in. Have I been accepted? Yes, I have. It is outside of Hancock County. Will I be a full-time student? This is really slow. Yes, I will be. This is where do you plan on, on attending? List your top three. If you're not decided yet, just list your top three, because say you didn't do University of Finley, but you've put University of Finley as one of your top three choices. I will reach back out with you later and say, have you decided where you're going to go? Because we have some scholarships that are specific to universities. So this is why we ask you that question. 
So again, we're already, already going to say University of Toledo, that's where I've already been accepted. That's where I want to go. Third party email. This is for your transcripts. And I even have this lovely little email template ready for you if you want to use it. So what you're going to do here is this is for your high school guidance counselor. They know this is coming. They do this every year. They know what they are doing. Trust them. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I need to reach out to my guidance counselor. So I'm going to put my guidance counselor's email address in this box. So if you're having Mr. Elvin do something, you're going to put his email. If you're having uh, Mrs. Jefferson, you're going to put her email, any of that. And then you can copy and paste this right here. So copy it right here. Then you're going to hit compose email. And a new screen is going to pop up. And I'm going to just paste that in there. And it gives them the deadline for when it has to be submitted. So if you use this, that's already there. So dear Mr. Elton, I'm applying for a scholarship. Will you take care of a transcript for me? It's all there. And then make sure you put your name so they know. Susie Scholar. Subject, transcript, and then hit send. What happens now is your guidance counselor is going to get two emails. They're going to get that email that you just sent them. Then you are going to get, see, I just got the email. Then you are going to get, they are also going to get an email from our system. And that will provide them the link that they need to go to to upload that transcript. So your guidance counselor will get this automatically and they will continue on their login page to see all of the students that are asking for a transcript. So that information is all there for them. All you have to do is put in their email address and compose that email to them. You certainly do not have to use the one that I've added, um, but you can. That's why it's there. You can do it however you want to do it. Essay, everyone is required an essay. So you're going to, in this essay, need to use the space to describe your goals for the future, why you feel that you deserve assistance from the scholarship committee for this particular um, application. Limit it to 300 words. Um, give, it, give it everything you've got. The, this is one of the things that I know the, the selection committees look at closely is the essay. But they're not going to like mine there. Then we've got these specific requirements here. Some of them are gonna apply, some of them are not. I, again, am going to answer just about anything that I can so you can see why that is later. I'm gonna say I'm a member or a child of a member of a, the Hancock Federal Credit Union. There is a Hancock Federal Credit Union scholarship. So if I mark that, I automatically qualify. There's one for Legacy Farmers Co-op. Um, there's one for foster care uh, students um, going into a trade. I'm also an employee's child for Cooper Tire because we've got Cooper Tire scholarships. My parent is also a member of the Finley Education Association, the teachers union. I attended the middle, one of the middle schools for two years. I have type one diabetes. I was in the National Honor Society. I've overcome major adversity. I want to be an entrepreneur. I've gone through Millstream. Um, I was in the debate club. I was in music. I was um, in Girl Scouts and in student government. Again, only if it applies to you. There's lots of criteria and that's what I'm just trying to show you all the different options that are out there. Third party email for your letter of recommendation. This is almost exactly like what you did for your transcript, except now you're asking someone to write a letter of recommendation for you. This will probably be someone outside of your guidance counselor, okay? But you're gonna do the same thing. You are gonna put that person's email address in here. You are gonna cut and paste. 
the letter, it again has the deadline so that then they know you're gonna compose it. Paste it in here, letter of recommendation. Again, make sure you put your name, Susie Scholar. Dear um, Mr. Dickman. And then you're gonna hit send. Our system will send it. So that person, the recommender that you just sent the email to will get two emails, one from you asking for it and one from our system with the link that they can go to to upload their letter of recommendation. Now, earlier I said, what Millstream program? I said I was in Millstream. I'm gonna say that I was in the culinary arts program. I also indicated that I went to Finley Middle Schools. I'm gonna say I went to Donnell. That question is in there because we have a scholarship specific to students who went to Donnell. Specific, you saw this next question pop up. Specific, did you play athletics in middle school at Donnell? There is a scholarship specifically for that. That's why I answered it that way. If you didn't go to Finley City Middle Schools or you didn't go to Donnell, you won't see these questions. I said that I was in Girl Scouts, so yes, I received a gold award rank. Work experience, this is what I do. Am I currently employed? Yes, I am. Then it pops up my employer's name. I'm gonna say I work at Beer Barrel. I work part-time. Again, if you're not and you click no, you won't see these questions. I'll say I work about 20 hours a week. And then we get to the end, true and accurate statement. You are saying that all of this is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. This is your signature for it. I agree. I'm going to put my name. And down here at the bottom, I've got several options. If I hit abandon request, everything is gone. I have gotten rid of this application. I've changed my mind and gone through all of this for nothing. I can do save application and that will save it and allow me to come back and work on it later. So if you get partway through this and it's time to leave for work, you can hit save application and log back in later and it will still be there. Anything you've started, okay? Once I hit submit application, that's when I'm saying, okay, I'm completely done. Now notice this red box just popped up. If you remember, I specifically did not answer a question so that we would see this. It tells me what, what was required that I didn't answer. So I have to scroll back up to that question to find it. Now, when I get up that way, you will see that, oops, sorry, I went a little too far. That is also red, it's right here. So it will remind you, this is where you were at. So I'm graduating 2021. So now I'm gonna go back down here. Now I'm done, I'm gonna submit my application. What it's doing right here is it is, it is matching you to anything that you might qualify for. That it seems to be very slow. Okay, this is your confirmation page. Your application has been submitted. Based on your answers, these are all of the, app, the scholarships that you qualify for. They are all listed right here. So I answered, I played golf. Good, there's that golf scholarship I should have qualified for. I answered that I am a kid whose parents work at Cooper. Good, there's that, that scholarship. Oh, there's another golf one. I said that I was a foster child. Yep, that's this one. So on and on and on, it continues. That's why when I did the application for you, I hit as many of those answers as I could so that you could see how it will branch to the next sort of question related to it so that you can qualify for anything that you're eligible for. All of them are listed for you. This is so nice in comparison to what we've had before that before we didn't have this, you didn't know what you qualified for immediately. You didn't know until after the scholarship application closed in February. 
So all of this is listed. And then it's going to tell you at the bottom what supplemental information you're going to need. That For these, you're also going to need something else. So if I want to see what that is, I can click continue. Or I can log off and come back to it another time because I know that this is very overwhelming. So here's where I can hit the continue. So this is gonna tell me what else I need. So up here are all the scholarships that I qualified for, okay? So um, say that I wanna look at what do I need for this one? I qualified for the Gregory James Schrader Memorial Scholarship, Swim Scholarship, because I swam. I answered my question that way in the application. So I am going to need another letter of recommendation. For all of your scholarships that you qualify for, you're gonna need another letter. So you'll do the same thing that you did the very first time around, but pick somebody else to write you another letter. Then you'll see that this particular one has another essay that you need to complete. Again, all of this is not due until February the 3rd. So you might see that you have other essays to do, but you've got time to complete them, but you also see that it's required. So if you don't complete it, it will show me at the, at, at the end of the application process period that you didn't do this and so you're not qualified for that. So when you get down here, you can decline the opportunity. Don't do that, your parents don't want you to do that. But if you decline the opportunity, that will show on the screen. I can see it, your parents can see it, you can see it, that you declined that scholarship opportunity. So you, if you had declined opportunity, you won't be eligible for that scholarship anymore. Once you complete this, you can hit submit application and it submits that one. Or you can hit save application, saves it, you can come back and work on it, okay? I know that it's a lot. Um, I tried to do, as I said, as many as possible so that you could see how questions kind of branch off to one another based on a lot of the criteria. Um, some quick questions. Um, the application closes February the 3rd at 12 noon. The review process then begins the beginning of March. So in February, we're finalizing everything. And in March, I will send everything to our selection committees and they will be, begin reviewing all of the scholarships. Once you have submitted absolutely everything, you don't have to worry about anything until it comes time for your award ceremonies. And that's when I will start um, informing uh, students as to what scholarships you've received. Once you have that information, then I will be staying in touch with you as to what else has to be done. The July is when we send out our scholarship checks directly to the universities. We do not give them to the students. Um, that is a IRS law. So it's, it's not something that we um, are able to do. So um, let me go back here. Okay, so I've got some questions here and it tells me that they were answered. So I'm, I'm just gonna make sure. You've looked through the application. Will we accept a downloaded version of your transcript from parchment or does it need to be sent from parchment? Um, in terms of the transcript, the, the high school transcripts, what we need is what's best to have is your final semester transcript. Your guidance counselors are getting emails from you right now um, asking for the transcripts, but most of them are gonna hold on to those and not, um, not submit those until after the end of the first semester so that everything is current when we go to the review process. So, um, Download a version of transcript. No, you can download it. You can download the version. Um, if you're talking about your high school transcript, it can be downloaded through there. Um, 
And yeah, I think I've talked about the guidance counselors and what they're going to do. They're going to handle all of your um, transcripts, high school transcripts. Um, now, I do want you to know there are some Finley High School specific scholarships that we don't handle. So that's the other thing that you'll need to do with your guidance counselors. And I know that they tell you this information as you go along. There are other scholarships out there that are outside of us. You will get those applications from your high school guidance counselors, um, but they will be in touch with all of you guys as seniors as that time approaches. But otherwise, all they have to do is um, submit those transcripts. And yes, you can save that application just by hitting save application. Once you hit submit, then you can't do that, but um, you can save it and come back to it because it, it can be kind of lengthy. Okay, speaking of lengthy, that was me. Um, I took a lot of time. Do you have other questions um, for, this, for this process? Anything else that I can be helping you with? If you've got a question or you can put that in the Q&A. Um, again, this is going to, this was being recorded. So we're going to send this out to your guidance counselors and they'll have it too. Um, I know I went through a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, this is a brand new system. I think you're going to find it's, well, you don't know the previous system, but it's, um, it's much more efficient um, and, and breaks it all down. But Again, some of the scholarships that popped up right in here, you will see um, are available to students that are within Hancock County. So say for example, um, obviously Finley High School Alumni Scholarship is just Finley High School students, but the David and Ruth Schneider Scholarship Fund is for anybody in Hancock County. So just because you are at Finley, you still can get scholarships that are outside of just Finley High School students. Mrs. Dyer is right here with us now. Mrs. Dyer is with us, that's awesome, great. Uh, what are the need-based scholarships? What are the need-based scholarships? Um, those, I can't tell you offhand specifically, we have a lot of them that are need-based scholarships. Um, that information you can actually find in that original, if you go to our website, and I showed you that link that says it lists all of the, all of the scholarships that we have, all 140 or whatever, um, it will show you on there if it's um, financial need-based, you can look at it that way. But we've got 140 scholarships, I can't, I can't uh, come up with that, those specific scholarships for you. Hi, Mrs. Dyer. Anything else? Uh, military-based scholarships, military-based scholarships. We do not have any military-based scholarships. That's an excellent question. Um, we don't have, now, if you are going to be attending a four-year um, four college, even if you're going into the military, um, you would still, there are still others that you could qualify for, but nothing specifically military-based. Oh, military family based. Um, no, no, nothing specific if, if family was in the military. Good question. Not a problem. Thanks for the questions. Anything else that I can help anybody with? Again, I don't wanna keep you all too long, but I wanna make sure that you 
get your questions answered. It's a big process. It's an important process and it's overwhelming. Uh, again, I, I know I've got a senior in my household, so we're not applying for any of these. He's not, he's not eligible for any of those. Um, but the, the whole college process is, is, can be very overwhelming and very stressful for everybody. So um, just know that you can reach out to me. Um, my email address is on the website. Um, your guidance counselors have my email address. You can uh, give me a call here at the office. I am working part, I'm working remotely some days and some days in the office, but um, I still get voicemails if you call the office um, or email is always, always quick and easy. And again, that's either on our website, you can get that or um, your guidance counselors have my email address too. So anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to let you all go because you've had a long day. But feel free to reach out or get with your guidance counselor and they can reach out, with, out to me um, and we can help walk you through anything. Okay? Thank you so much, everybody, for being part of it. Really, really appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Enjoy the rest of your senior year.